Welcome to the Unlock Podcast, an innovative approach for human development. My name is Amanda, and today I am joined by Marcel Herweth, who's head of the Academy for Unlock, senior L&D consultant, senior coach, and masterclass trainer. Hi, Marcel, and welcome to the Unlock Podcast. Would you like to briefly introduce yourself? Hi. Um, well, I think you already introduced me, so that's all my titles. <laughs> but apart from that, uh, it might be good to know that I uh, really love working as a coach and and in training uh, and i'm very happy to hear to be here and to talk a bit about uh, e-coaching and online coaching and we are very exciting to hear everything that you have to say but mainly let's start with a brief intro in the coaching industry because i looked into it and it looks like it dates back to the 70s um, when it transitioned into the commercial uh, field. But later on, we find that late 80s, early 90s was when the first um, coaching model was named. So that's when companies mm -hmm. were really thought that it was like a very important component worldwide. Mm -hmm. And by 2012, coaching became an accepted and required discipline field within in like industry, especially in senior management. And today we can find 85% of companies use it for senior management and about 52% offer coaching for other employees. So we this is kind of like a very brief introduction and then mm -hmm. we can get back to 2020, which is the year that uh, we all got our life <laughs> taken up with the pandemic, yeah. and everything turned very digital. So that's why you're here specifically because we have been for years doing online coaching and you are, well, one of the greatest examples that can actually <laughs> um, talk to us about this. And we want to know about how can you enhance your coaching in the digital field? Like how can you truly make online work as well as the uh, in-person meetups that you do in the coaching world? So because mm. of that, we are here to discuss how can it be enhanced through technology, your coaching practices. So the first question that I have for you today, Marcel, is mm -hmm. um, how can we humanize a practice in a digital environment? Yeah, well, I think that is one of the the most frequently asked questions when when I say that I work digitally or that I'm an e-coach, because people say, "Well, you miss the nonverbal cues." Um, so I think it's very important because I think in every communication there are two things that are very important, which is clarity and connection. So what you say needs to be clear. Uh, and there need to be a connection, otherwise it's clear, but it's cold. And if there's only connection and no clarity, people don't know what you're saying or what they need to do. And the same goes for coaching. Um, however, when, you do, when you're not with your client in the room, when you're not coaching together in a face-to-face -face situation, um, I notice that you emphasize a bit more on the relationship. This, so creating that connection from which you can work is more important. So if you talk about humanizing it, I think that you use um, other cues and other uh, opportunities to, to connect to the person you're working with. Could you provide an example? Uh, yes. Um, well, I work in a blended or some people call it hybrid way. That means that I, um, I hardly ever coach face to face, but I do a lot of video coaching, uh, but I combine it often with written coaching. Uh, so if you start with a solely written trajectory, then uh, it you build up the relationship by introducing yourself, just like you introduced me, uh, and and you make sure that because um, most coaches introduce themselves along the line of their uh, experience or or the courses they take of the kind of niche they have, but now uh, you need to make sure that you put a little personal aspect in it too, because people need to feel that you're a human being and not only. Uh, a professional machine or something like that. They need to know that it's the person behind uh, the messages. So, so you spend a little bit more time on uh, um, getting to know each other. Um, but if you do that in a video call, I would say it's it's like in any other first um, acquaintance that you ask uh, stuff about where you're calling from or. Uh, uh, well, usually in a face-to-face, -face, it's could you find it if they come to your office, but things like that. So I think the way to humanize it is to to pay more attention to the person as a person before you jump into the the, the, the topic of the coaching or the coaching itself, if that makes yeah. sense. 
Yeah, obviously it's, uh, I'm trying to exemplify here, but more so getting to know the person rather than the client, I would say. Yeah, exactly. Well, they need to feel that you're a person and, and, and for some, and actually I, th I think that's quite funny because what happened when people started using more video calls, uh, when the pandemic, um, uh, was there, you, you would see all sorts of things. You, you see people's living rooms or cats or dogs in the screen or kids in the screen, which actually make, made it more personal. But it's also a, it's a very good icebreaker to call it like that, to talk about that. Like, hey, you see, you have a cat. I know I have one too or something like that. So, so you use, um, maybe you use things that normally you would think, oh, they're not really relevant for the coaching. Uh, but now you think like, but they're relevant for creating a more personal relationship. So it doesn't need to be that you become friends because it's still very professional, but it's just to have that initial, um, that, that initial establishment of a relationship and that, that, that it feels more, um, that there's, it creates more trust. Okay. So, yeah, so I was reading, so I was reading more so into this uh, development that the coaching industry has gotten. And it talks about how psychology has become a, a huge player in the game because now you have to be more aware of a lot of things that actually are triggering to some people in, in their environment. Like whether it's been at home, like you're mentioning, like in the pandemic, they mm -hmm. were at home and they had their families, this and not, but also um, how psychological safety are you also making a person aware of that this is a space where you can actually show up and be as you are mm -hmm. yeah it's it's funny that you say that because um one of the things that i think works really well uh, and maybe i don't know if it's directly linked to making it more humane but um is that if you coach people in their own environment usually that feels more comfortable so if you if you if you've been if you're a coach from your own living room or your study or wherever you feel safe, um, then it's different than when you come to the coach's office, or yeah. when when the coach comes to your work office. You know where where there's always that okay there might be colleagues in the background or, but when you're at home, uh, usually you feel more comfortable. So that really helps because if you work online people will usually be, they can choose in what environment they are, where they go to. Yeah, I can see that. That's very interesting. I've, I haven't heard that before. And it's actually very also connected to the to the fact that, you know, work is work. So they might be also felt like they have to do the coaching and rather than choosing it on their own time and space. So how would you describe how to do like um, a cohesive coaching program uh, within corporate? Um, well, that's interesting because I might come back to what you just said. Um, I think um, because you talked about the history of coaching and a lot of that, um, it, specifically in the beginning years, but still in a lot of organizations, coaching is seen as a performance, uh, enhancing performance, uh, which means that it's usually used when somebody's performance is not that good. So what what we try to do, or at least what we try to do in Unlock, uh, and what I think is very important, is to um, emphasize the development uh, part of coaching, that you could use it for any topic. And it's mostly for development and not only for, you know, creating a better performance. So then when you bring that back to, to work, um, I think uh, it, when, it, when it's about development, it should be as embedded as possible in people's lives. And I think that's where the power of um, using different means of coaching comes in. Because let's say if I would coach you on um, being assertive on the work in the workplace, and um, we have a conversation like a video call about it, and, and you want to try some new stuff because you have this important meeting next uh, uh, or coming Friday. Uh, and we talk about that and then the, the meeting comes and, and in a more traditional way of coaching, we might have a session maybe two weeks from now. So when I see you then, I ask, oh, by the way, how did it did it go? Or you tell me how, how it went, but it's a long time ago. Um, but now what could happen is I could send you a text message um, in the morning to to wish you good luck or or you sent me something like, okay, how was this again? Or um, wish me good luck or whatever it is um, and then you do that um, you do that session and then you can report back to me because we work with 
uh, on Love Campus, which is a digital platform. So you can write a reflection on what happened in the in the meeting to me, and I can respond uh, with one or two deepening questions to anchor the learning. So you can actually just after you came out of the meeting, you can log in in on Love Campus and write me that message. So it's really on the spot. And you don't have to wait uh, until two weeks from now that you maybe partially forgotten it. So how, how was it again? Oh, yeah, there are five other meetings in between, you know. So so I think um, that aspect makes it more personal and also creates more development, not only performance, but it's more embedded in the person's full life. That is quite amazing. I, I completely like space in that sense that, of course, you can do it immediately because you have this digital environment. But we were so used to having these trainings at work and then you get to review the activity a week after and you're like, um, yeah. what was it about again? So that is actually one of the greatest benefits that that it, that getting enhancing your, your practice through digital means uh, has. Mm -hmm. So what would be the best practices for successful digital interaction when coaching, like besides humanizing it in the sense that was uh, the first thing that we talked about, but what would be best mm -hmm. practices? Um, I think best practices is um, starts with designing uh, very well with the person you're coaching um, because some of them might not be used to using also coaching in a written form or you know a, a blending like do some written parts and do some video for some of that for some people video is even a bit un, uh, uncomfortable or unfamiliar so be clear about that but also highlight the possibilities like like the example i just gave for people is uh is very nice because in unlock we work a lot with people who who um who might go on a on a mission or are in an area where there's not really a good internet connectivity so to arrange around that like how um what's your possibility for video calls uh, uh, what's the frequency how, how much time do you have available for this uh, trajectory and what is the most most suitable time that's one but the second thing also you can highlight um because the thing, the example I just gave about um, being able to get online immediately after the meeting, um, there is, of course, also a possibility to reflect. So if I send a coaching question, you don't have to respond immediately. Like if I ask you a question now, you might feel obliged to immediately give a response. But when I write it down, uh, it gives you time to think about it. And of course, as a coach, we have time to think about it too and, and, and reflect on what the best possible step in the coaching could be. So I think that design is really, it starts with that design. Um, time available, if you're going to use uh, different media, how do you going to use them? Uh, of course, also the safety of media, because some, um, uh, like if you coach an executive and that person has a secretary, uh, you don't want the secretary to be involved in the coaching. So so you need to know what's safe to use and what not. So, so that's a big aspect. Um, but then also... Um, I, I think you should start try using different media and then after a couple of weeks, check whether that works and, and, and what works best. So I think it should always be tailor-made. Um, but since there are more poss possibilities, I see that people um, are very happy about it because they can access the coaching any time of the day, even if there's a time difference or when they don't want to do it during work time, they can do it at home, but they don't need to be online. They, uh, I mean, on a, in a video call, uh, uh, real time. So they, they can write and they can reflect. So that really works. Yeah, kind of like uh, journaling practice, if you may. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. One of our colleagues even said it's, it's, it's like a journal, but then one who writes back to you. So I think that's brilliant. <laughs> that is brilliant, actually, because yeah. I mean, we sit with our thoughts for so long. And if we get feedback, that would be, uh, yeah, <laughs> very, very much. Yeah. 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 So yeah. what supports your practice? Uh, do you work with any models or do you work with specific uh, methodologies? Well, um, I think that's the that's the brilliant thing uh, of e-coaching, just like with other coaching. You, you, uh, I work with because I'm also training uh, uh, coaches in, in written coaching. I, I, uh, I'm the trainer of the masterclass, like you said. And um, I noticed that they come from all different coaching schools. And actually, everything is adaptable in this. 
But I think one important thing is, um, and, and that's what we use, the um, uh, ABC model, accel accelerated behavioral change, because it really speeds up. Uh, the change speeds up by using uh, this uh, form of coaching. Uh, but what I think it's very powerful about it is that it's really, it has three phases. So um, the analyze phase in which you explore with the client, what is the thing you really want to work on? Because most of the time, if clients come to the coaching, they might have a topic, uh, but it might be the surface of a topic. So usually it's a, it's a few layers deeper than that. So you explore it in the what we call the analyze phase. And once you're at the end of that analyze phase, they know, okay, this is the thing I really want to work on. Uh, and then you go to the internalized phase, which uh, that ha has a, well, it, I notice I'm doing this with my hands. It's, it's, it's quite dynamical. So, so it might be that, like, for instance, coming back to the example of, of uh, being assertive at work, if you have a meeting, uh, you could say, uh, you might say, I'm going to try to say no two times in this meeting because I know I usually... Well, there might be plenty of times I want to say no, but I'm, I'm going to try two times this time. And, and then you try it and then you can reflect on what you did. And then, you know, that's this cycle of uh, action, a little goal, uh, action, reflection, and then bring it back to the bigger topic. And then once you've done that for a while, there, there will be a point where you feel you're really more assertive than you were and that you can go... Uh, that you can go without a coach. You don't need a coach any, anymore to support you because you have all it takes to support yourself. Um, so, so we use that model, which has these three phases. So analyzing, internalizing, so practicing new behavior, and then sustain is the phase like, okay, what do I need to keep this? Um, um, how can I continue without the coach? Um, and one thing that is really important about it, because when you work a lot, uh, online, and I, I mean also combined with written coaching. Uh, a written coaching message doesn't have a beginning, a middle, and an end, just like uh, a real-time conversation has. Uh, and then it's good to know where are we and, and, and how does this fit in the, the, the bigger picture of the coaching. So I think it's, uh, for me, and I noticed for many people, it's a very useful, um, well, I would even call it a backbone of, of coaching a very useful model to structure the coaching and, and to stay on track, uh, both you and, and your client. Yeah, and if you ever fall off the wagon, you can always go back to the model and review it and be like, okay, where, where was I? Where did I fail? Exactly. And if you're not yeah. really implementing the sustainable stage, you can always you know, see where is it that you're falling behind and kind of review it and go back exactly. to the journaling and all the things that you can yeah. do to sustain your practice. Yeah. Yeah, and that's also, a, a, a um, well, one thing is you, you sometimes you go up and down because you're, you're about to arrive at the sustained phase. Like I think the coaching is about to end, but there's this small thing that I still want to change. And then you quickly go back to the analyze phase to analyze what is it exactly that I still want to learn on top of everything I learned. And then you practice with that and then you come back to the sustain. So that's one thing. And the other thing, which I think is brilliant, once you start working with written coaching, um, everything you use in the coaching is written so that you can read it back. So when you're a client, and I've, I've heard that many times, and they say, you know, I was a bit lost, and then I read uh, everything we've written in over the past couple of months, and I was back on track again, because I thought, oh, yeah, this is how I did it. And, and I was there then, and now I'm here. So it was actually a big move, you know, so so it really helps. Yeah, that's great. That's actually a great way to, uh, yeah, think about blended coaching, right? You you also have half your work already written down. So why not go back and mm -hmm. reread wherever you're falling behind? And that might be, you know, also making you avoid doing all the work again, like kind of yeah. take from where you where you're standing and then just kind of move forward. So would you have any exactly. advice for new online coaching the old coaches that are just recent in the field? Yeah, I would say just trust your capabilities because I think what one of the first things that happens when you do something new, whether it's your client doing something new, if for coaches when you start using a new methodology, um, sometimes we feel uncomfortable with that. Uh, and we f and we forget that we already have a lot of skills and a lot of uh, experience. So what I 
what I still do sometimes, specifically when when uh, most of the trajectory is written, uh, if I'm a bit stuck, because sometimes the client has four or five topics that they bring into a message. And then I think, okay, if I would be face to face with this, this person, what would be my next question? So you can trust the skills you have and, um, and also trust that you're able to create that relationship because we do it all the time. You know, we, we text, we WhatsApp, we uh, email, um, continuous, uh, cont- uh, how you say that, all day long. Uh, specifically with, with family and friends, we do a lot of WhatsApping. Um, it's not really that different. I mean, of course, the tone of voice because it's a professional relationship. But then again, if you can put something in, in five, um, if you can put something in five sentences there, or maybe even two, you can do it in e-coaching too. So trust that capability. And um, like I said before, start with a good, um, start with setting up that relationship and creating a clear way of working together because that's the basis. Once you have that established, it's like any other coaching. You just go with whatever the client brings to the table and and you'll dance together. Thank you so much for your answer, Marcel. Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have today. So I just want to go uh, kind of quick back to summarizing uh, the key points that you said here and spe- especially regarding to the code to your coaching pro- practice. Um, Mm -hmm. And the most important things that you mentioned here were to humanize uh, the practice, design a cohesive and collaborative process and program that works for both parts um, to make it a safe space, you know, psychological Mm -hmm. safety space um, where everybody is aware to show up uh, as they are, whether it's within their organization or at their home or wherever environment they choose. And to mm. trial or all, all media, right? Like you never know what's gonna work. So kind of like mm. go back and forth to see what's working. Um, and then the most specific one, which is that all coaching programs should be tailor-made because that means you actually take the time and the chance to truly study um, something that's gonna be beneficial for both parts. And it's actually a yeah. really good way to, uh, you know, make use of your, your time and investment. And yeah. the most important advice, of course, was to trust your capabilities, because even if as a new coach, something brought you here, right? So mm. you, it, this is not like a, a year in the in the making. You've probably been longer in the field. You just haven't been as focused or anything. So trusting your capabilities will get you a long way. Would you like to add yeah. anything more to what I just said, Marcel? Well, I think one thing uh, that came to mind while you were summarizing, and thank you for that, is... Um, I think what is brilliant if you use different media, uh, every media has a has a, a special um, power to it. So if you want your client to reflect, you might write them a question. If you want to try breathing exercises or you want to hear how, how their tone of voice is when they speak, when they do want to do something in presentation skills, you might want to hear them or see them. So you can use these different things. So you can slow it down and speed it up by using uh, different uh, media, which I think is very powerful because then then it is as tailor-made as possible. Thank you so much for everything that you have shared. So much valuable insights on how can technology can enhance your, your e-coaching practice. And thank you, well, for Marcel, personally for joining us and to our listeners. Mm-hmm. Stay tuned as we continue to unlock human potential.